Hey guys, this is Debbie Boyer and in this video segment we're going to talk about creating infographics using a great tool called PictoChart. Now infographics are graphical representations of information, so they convey complex information in very simple and interesting ways. So here's an example of, a, of an infographic. You'll see that there's graphics and charts and images and text, and it's all put together in a very visual, pleasing format, but it takes a lot of information and lets us be able to convey it and understand it in very simple terms. The great thing about kids creating their own is that they can have all kinds of information, all kinds of thinking. So it lets kids classify, analyze, interpret, sequence, explain, compare and contrast, predict, summarize. All the great things that we want going on in our classrooms can be accomplished when kids create, communicate, and think critically about their learning. So an infographic could be one in science, one in history, but it takes a very uh, conceptual idea and then breaks it apart. So there's different tools that allow us to do this, but one of my favorites is called PictoChart. And the way that we're going to do this is go to Google, and we're going to go to the App Store. And from a computer, the App Store will be here in the top left-hand corner. On a Chromebook, it's going to be at the bottom of the screen with a little magnifying glass. So when you click on either one of those, whichever one you're working on, we're going to go to the Web Store, and we're going to look for PictoChart. And it's with a K. And when that opens up, I'm going to add it to Chrome. And I'm going to say yes, the App Store, whether it's this top one or the magnifying glass on a Chromebook. I can see that it's been added to my list of apps. So I'm going to scroll across using these little lines at the bottom, and I'm going to find PictoChart. One of the reasons I really like PictoChart, I, I like Canva, I like Infogram, but PictoChart lets us log in with our Google accounts. And when you're having kids working with GAF apps, in our district, Picto, PictoChart is just the best choice for me. But try them all, see what you think. When I click on PictoChart now, it knows that I have a Google account and it's tied with my Google account, so I log in without having to create a whole separate username and password. In the middle of the screen, you're going to see that there's different templates from which to choose, and I'm just going to use the infographic and scroll down the page slightly and you'll see that there's a blank new one to start out from scratch with nothing on it, so you might want your students to do that. There's also templates that are free that you can use to begin creating. So I'm going to use one on Amelia Earhart, and when it opens up, you're going to see that it is a long, narrow look to it, and it's created with uh, blocks. So there's different blocks on the screen, and we can come in and choose the first block, and we can choose to size it, make it larger or smaller by dragging and dropping. We can double click on it and add our own title and our own subtitle if we'd like. We can also come over and use the text tool on the left hand side of the screen and when we click on the text it'll allow us to pull out some text and drop it and we can add our own text wherever we need it to be. We can also move that text around and we can use the rotation tool to uh, readjust it if we need to. If there's graphics in the template that you don't want to use you can always click on those and then go to the scissors on the toolbar to cut that off the screen. We can come over and look at graphics and have shapes and lines that we add, icons, photos, photo frames. I'm going to go ahead and choose icons and search for airplane. And when I do, I'm going to choose one that I like and drag it out and drop it onto the screen. And if I'm not careful, I'll squish or misshape the graphics. So if I'll hold the shift key and drag at the same time, it always keeps it in the right proportion. Now once I have a black graphic out on the screen, it gives me a color choice that if I'd like, I can choose a different color for the graphic. I can also pull out a separate graphic, but if it already has color in it, you'll not be able to change uh, the color of it. The color choice goes away. Now when we're looking down the screen, we can choose a different block and begin working in that. 
There's tools right beside the block that'll let us move that block up and down and rearrange if we'd like. There's also one that will let us duplicate or clone the block or delete the block. I'm going to add a new block right now. And when I do, there's some really great tools over on the left-hand side of the screen that you'll want to check out. So there's charts. So when we have our kids working with data and, and wanting to represent their ideas, charts are awesome. You can see I think there's 13 or 14 different types of charts. And we can add our own data right here within the program. You can also import from an Excel spreadsheet if you'd like, but we can add data and then go ahead and insert the chart. Once it's on our block, we can click it, hold the shift key, and size it, move it around on the screen however we want it to look, and we can go back in at any time and edit with the pencil. And when we edit, there's a little settings area in the top right-hand corner of the screen right under an update chart. And this one will allow us to choose different colors that we might want to use um, for our chart and we can uh, work with that just a little bit and get it just like we want it. You can choose the title position, the legend, you can do all kinds of things, the axis, everything that you need with the chart right here within the program. So I'm going to go ahead and click on update chart. I'm also going to add a map and maps are great representation as well and we can search by country if we'd like. We can just insert the whole world map and I think that's what I'm going to do since we're talking about Amelia Earhart. And I'm going to hold my shift key and size that map to put in my infographic as well. Next to the pencil, um, when we click on that, it will let us choose a different color for our entire map. Or we can come in and look for countries and highlight those countries with a different color. So if I wanted to, I could put the United States in pink. I could put France in a different color. And you can see that we can manipulate that data just a little bit to be what we would like for it to, to look like. So some awesome tools with maps that you'll want to check out. One thing we'll want to be sure and do is title this. And so I'm going to click on this in with students, but you're probably going to want to know uh, their name in the title. You're going to want to be sure that it's saved and then you can preview it if you'd like. You can download it and when you get ready to download it's going to download as a PNG file format. You can also choose to publish it and when you publish it then you can share it out with parents and the world. You can have a link to, to put on your teacher web page. There's all kinds of things you can do once you publish it. But we're going to publish this now and it says once you've generated the link, the link can't be changed. So be careful you have it just like you want it. Double click on it and then right click and copy it and we have the link. We can also open it and see what it looks like on the web. There's one last way to share out and that is to send a Picto card to the teacher and it's pretty much an email from um, Picto chart and they would put their name to you and then your email address and then send the Picto card now. So some awesome ways to share out and have real world work that other people will see their work and not just their teacher. We'll want to go back to that file. We'll go to accounts and see my saved Picto charts and we can go back in at any time and uh, choose to edit it to uh, unpublish it, to look at it on the web, all kinds of different things uh, that we can do. PictoChart is an amazing tool for kids to think deeply and critically and to make connections in their learning. So I hope you'll give it a try and let your kids create. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.